Go. That was Jill Scott and Anthony Hamilton, So In Love. Uh, it's a topsy-turvy time. I think, uh, you know, I, I was reading where a young uh, actress, Evan Rachel Wood, insists on bringing up, uh, you know, what had happened to Kobe later on. Meanwhile, hanging out with Woody Allen, which is <laughs> weird. <laughs> which is weird. Maybe he's grooming her. I don't know. And then you have Ari Shafir, uh, you know, a comedian who says some things and his dates are canceled. Listen, I'm a proponent of free speech. I literally am. I've said some things that have got people offended. I have been protested. People have uh, came out of, dropped out of business with me. We have, we've had stations do it. We've had affiliates do it. So I understand. I also understand this. What I try to do, if I am saying something, and I learned my lesson about this, if I am saying something, I try to make it at least ironic or funny. Not be mean, not to be judgmental. I did that before. I understood the, the, the ramifications of it, and I also understand that doesn't forward a point. Here is the thing that I find particularly salient. We, if you right now bring up Kobe's rape allegations and you voted for Donald Trump, you're a hypocrite. If you right now point to that as the thing you're remembering by right now and you, and you, and you vote or support Trump, you're a hypocrite. Right now, we live in a nation where that is going on. The Me Too bit mo moment is going on. We have a we have a serial rapist in office and a, and a burgeoning movement, uh, and they seem to be at odds. It is the bipolar relationship that we seem to be having as a country. Um, I will say this, and I've said it again, and I and I and I keep belaboring the point because these articles keep popping up. I understand what happened in 2003. But I also urge you to look at what's happened since. Look at what Kobe has tried to do um, with female athletes in basketball. Look at what he tried to do, not just at the college level, but uh, but the professional level. Look at the big raise they just got, who, which, which he helped spearhead. Look at the things that he has done as a result of what happened to him. Since 2003, and a lot of us have a lot of things, and we don't learn from them. He was in trouble. His marriage was in trouble. Everybody made jokes about he had, how he bought a big purple diamond. He got his wife back. They proceeded to have kids, and it looked like they were in a loving relationship. Maybe the thing that happened to him shaped the way he would treat and raise his daughters. And then, subsequently, the way he would insist that women were treated. Maybe instead of pointing at the thing that, that was supposed to be his downfall, it made him the human being he later became. Maybe that moment in time, and all of us have them, that fork in the road, we decide we're going this way or that. How come we just can't say that moment right there was a seminal, pivotal moment in him, and he became a better human being because of it? Like that, we have a sportscaster who was talking about her first meeting uh, uh, Kobe Bryant and how she uh, started crying after he started talking about his daughters, and now she lost. She started, she got very emotional. You don't see Jerry West being emotional. You see Shaquille being emotional. This isn't because this dude was what he was in 2003. 2003, he couldn't have sponsors. 2003, he didn't have teammates. They were looking. He was shunned. He is getting these kind of accolades because of what he did with his dash. That time between the time you're born and the time you leave. And that dash, I think, was exemplary. People are not cutting lights off and taking knees and saying all these, and they're giving these men all these accolades because of what he did just athletically. It was the kind of man he became. So maybe that moment, that dark moment in Boulder, Colorado, shaped who he became. And because of that, he started raising daughters a certain way. Maybe the face decided, you know, you, you're going to have four daughters. And you're going to have to see, navigate all those things. And you got to make them more aware and, and get them ready for a world that can see things like that. Maybe though, that thing in 2003 that you're bringing up shaped him who he is now. Maybe he, he took that moment and became a better person. Now, if you're going to uh, talk about an experience, you have to start uh, at the beginning and start where it ends. Stop telling Kobe's story in the middle. If you're going to tell the beginning, tell the end too. Stop telling the story in the middle because he took a moment in time when everything was lost and I believe he became a better human being. And I believe that's all any of us want. That's a little note from the GED section. We got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.